Ah, oh, it's time to rush a video based on almost no information. I feel like I just did this this last few years. I've been a blur. Gen 9! It's based on the Iberian Peninsula, so Spain and Portugal. Though, I won't be surprised if Portugal becomes just like a single town, or if it's just not brought up at all. Scarlet and Violet, though. Those are the colors on the Spanish flag. Of the Second Republic, not the modern one, though. But so much for the Zarud hints at India theory. Though, interestingly, if we think about it just a tad, there is only a single European country with wild monkeys, and it is Spain, so the whole mythical points to the next generation thing still kinda works. I'm also curious about how much Spanish history and influence they'll be using beyond just modern Spain, you know? Like, will there be Pokemon based on Aztec things, for instance? Spain was all about world exploration and exploitation for a while there, and they were pretty infamously aggressive with the South Americans, and I mean, you still can't deny their cultural connection with most of South America speaking Spanish and Portuguese. I also wonder if there's gonna be like an Ifrit Pokemon or other Muslim influence, like their historic architecture. You see, in the year 711, the Iberian Peninsula was conquered and became a great Muslim civilization up until around 1492. So that's almost a millennia of Muslim rule. But speaking of religion, Spain is very Christian. Most recent numbers show that about 70 to 80 percent of the population claims to be, and Portugal is even higher at 90 to 95. So I wonder if the idea that snakes had legs before Eve bit the fruit of the tree of knowledge influenced this design at all. My gut reaction when I see this guy is apple lizard, but taking just a moment to think about it, it is shaped like a hot pepper, which would make much more sense for a fire starter. What is flaming apples? Interestingly, Europe has no crocodiles, nor do they have any chili peppers native to them. It makes me wonder if it will become a dinosaur as it evolves, or a serpentine pepper plant to better fit that zodiac theory that commenters get irrationally mad about every time that it gets mentioned. Perhaps a pepper gets a coatle. It's got the little hair on the top, but also... <clears throat> Male crocodiles are called bulls, so it's the oxen zodiac. Or maybe that theory is finally debunked. It literally doesn't matter. Don't get emotional about it. So, Fue Coco. Well, Fuego is Spanish for fire. Cocodrilo, I'm probably mispronouncing that. I hope my uh, one year of Spanish classes are gonna pay off. Maybe it's time to take some more. Uh, it's Spanish for crocodile, uh, but also consider the Coco or the Cucafera. An Iberian dragon that was first documented in the 1400s, but is still used in festivals today. It's often depicted with a coconut body, as coco is also Spanish for coconut. And the inside of coconuts are a similar color to Fue Coco's face, which kind of makes it resemble like a skull. I could totally see it becoming a spooky thing as it evolves, like a De Los Muertos ghost pepper. But fun fact, in Brazil, rather than depicting Coco as a dragon, she's an alligator. <laughs> I think there are going to be plenty of South American references then. I mean, there's so much just culture and things that travel between the two, like peppers! Like the ped Pedros, Pedros? Pedro Rose pepper? One of the spiciest in the world, and mostly grown in Spain. But also, also tomatoes. Spain has that famous tomato festival, yeah? There has to be a tomato Pokemon. Just don't know how that relates to fire but maybe you'll tell me. Uh, cacao could also be involved too. They kind of have the same shape and the Aztecs saw them as a gift from the gods, just like this little guy. Or perhaps to stick with that potential biblical theme, the tale of St. George and the dragon is seen here. It's a tale where St. George, blessed by God, slays a serpentine dragon. It's quite literally a serpent due to the biblical symbolism. This particular tale was such an important part of medieval Europe that George finds himself on coats of arms and flags all across Europe, including multiple in Spain. And one more serpentine dragon to mention is the Culebre? Culeb Culebre. Culebre. It's a cool libra, that's for sure. It's a winged serpent who lives in northern Spain and is said to be immortal and have heavy, thick scales, and it just chills in its cave most of the time. One of the only ways to kill it is by feeding it a burning red-hot stone, perhaps what the fire type here is referencing. Also, if you can't tell, this video's rushed, hence my hair, and hence the not even trying to pronounce things, but could that be it? Mayhaps. Ultimately, though, we don't know for sure until we see its evolutions. Other notes I couldn't figure out a way of putting in nicely. Uh, the Turkish snake pepper plant. 
That's the note. There's also the Brachysomophus crocodilinus, or crocodile snake eel, which burrows in sand and lies in wait to ambush prey, which relates to Fuecoco being laid back and going at its own pace in its description. Now for the Quackistador, Quaxley. It just looks like a Braxley. And that strut, that pose. It's not a reference to the gay sailor trope, is it? Uh, it's described as earnest and tidy, which naval ships tend to be. The whole military, really. If you aren't training, you're cleaning. And by training, I mean calisthenics. Exercise via dancing. Quaxley's pose could very well just be a reference to sailor dancing. Look at this. Why do sailors dance? Plus, I mean, look at it. That very much looks like a sailor hat on its head. Think Donald Duck. That's a sailor hat. Donald is a cultural icon, so it would not be surprising for him to be referenced in Pokemon at some point. But also, what if that's not a hat? What if Quaxley is just a pompadour duck? And that's its hair, hmm? Big tuft of feathers on top of its head, looking all cute. Either way though, those feet are blue. It's a blue-footed booby! I love these things! They're called boobies! It even has the opai symbol on its hat. You know, like how Magbar has actual booba on its head. Or wait, is that just a wave? That's much more child-friendly. Or is it less because kids drown? And are also... still nursing. I guess that's a really little kid. This is getting weird, let's move on. To this Spanish duck, the white-headed duck. It has a blue bill. I could totally see a middle evo based on that. Interestingly, Quaxley's not water flying type. That, that's interesting. Remember, Rowlet got its grass flying type from the start, so why not Quaxley? Could it be a reference to baby birds, baby ducks included, not being able to fly yet? Could it be because it will be gaining a totally different type later on? Hmm? I guess that didn't stop Decidueye. But perhaps steel. And it sticks with being a duck in the water, and it gains ship elements, like Empoleon. Sailors and migratory birds, like ducks, do have to be expert navigators, so the connection's pretty easy. Maybe it'll be water dark like a pirate! Or a conquistador! Now, sailor suits have always been related to sailors coming from the Royal Navy's ceremonial dress uniform, but it later became a form of children's clothing, started by Prince Albert Edward, who wore it as a child on his royal yacht. Rich people, am I right? Cosplaying as working class people? Well, either way, it made its way into media as a shorthand to mean child or childlike, like Donald Duck. He's a big child. He's someone who hasn't grown up. He throws tantrums and he's greedy. Childlike emotional damage. Its name could also be a reference to Don Quixote's Alonzo Quejano. Odds are, if not this line, some Pokémon in this game is going to reference him. Don Quixote is considered a founding work in Western literature. It is often labeled as the first modern novel ever, and it's one of the most translated books in the world. It was written by Spanish author Miguel de Cervantes, and in short, it's about a knight and their chivalry and Alonso went bonkers and decided to give up his normal life to wander around fighting off evil and gaining renown, all so that he could just marry the local farm girl, who he decided is actually a princess. His total break from reality is endearing and wild, and results in such things as him fighting a windmill because he thinks it's a giant, fighting some friars because he thinks they kidnapped a lady who just happens to be nearby, and thinking every inn or tavern he comes across as an ancient castle. Medieval comedy. Actually, I wonder if that means it's not Quaxley, but... Quali. Quaxley? Quahati? Quahati? <laughs> All right, Lytton's weed-smoking girlfriend. That's just a baby Iberian lynx, isn't it? I bet it's gonna get saber teeth, hmm? Or be the next Furbay Pokemon. Maybe both. A lynx that evolves into a leopard print cave woman to be conquista conquered. Gatito is Spanish for little cat, and it's a sprig, which is the small stem of a plant. So like, it's pretty straightforward. It's a kitten and a tiny part of a plant. And it's light! It's white! Egad! That's mostly fluff, I suppose. I wonder if it's going to reference puss in boots at all. Zorro style. Grass fighting? Or if it will get more into the supposed psychic abilities that Lynx are all said to have in mythologies around the world. Grass psychic? If not a Lynx or a Smilodont, I could see it evolving into a grass lion. There's a lion on the flag of Spain, after all and their coat of arms. It's to represent the kingdom of Leon, which is the northern half of the peninsula. Actually, what other animals have been on Spanish flags and coat of arms? Oh, eagles, that's a bird. We're two, two out of three so far. Uh, whoa, and the most common thing in all of these coat of arms and flags from all across Spain, 
St. George's Cross. Perhaps referencing the similarly colored serpentine dragon, eh? Hmm. Actually, one of Barcelona's coat of arms even depicts the dragon itself. Barcelona being one of Spain's major cities. It's also where La Sangrada Familia is, which resembles this building that we see in the trailer. What I assume will be the Pokemon League. Either way though, mispronunciations aside, I am excited. I wish they would have taken another year, but I understand, you know. Which starter is your favorite? I have no idea. This is the first time I've legitimately liked all three of them in a long time. <laughs> wow. For more Pokemon Origins, subscribe. And until next time, never stop using your noggin. That was supposed to be a snap, and I failed at it. Just like all these words. I need to take Spanish again.